and there's soldiers running by and everything's frantic. And they're in, it looks to be either, I don't know if it's Roman. Um, they have gold, like a gold breastplate that um, it comes off and strips. And they're wearing white underneath it. And they've got shields and swords. And I'm a servant and I was coming to, I was coming down the corridor to deliver food to one of the men that are in charge. But all of a sudden everybody started running out and it was very frantic. So I just stood, I'm standing against the wall, just waiting for all of these people to run past. And they're running past outside. They're not saying anything at all. And then the man that leads them goes running past. And he doesn't say anything either. They just all leave in a flurry. So I'm going to walk down the corridor and peek into his office into like his his room where he plans and resides just to see if I can see any information. So I go in there and look. And he's got drawn out on paper to that they're gonna leave the city as they're headed out of the city walls. So that's but beyond that, he doesn't have anything written. So in seeing that, I am going to return back to the kitchen with the food because I know they won't be back for a prolonged period of time. So I turn and I'm going down the corridor and turn again back to the kitchen. And my sister and two other women are in there preparing food because we need to feed all of them. But I tell them to stop. Everyone just ran out. So there won't be any need to prepare supper today. And so we'll need to ask. One of us will just ask. Um, what we are to do for the day. We'll need to feed the man that we work for and his family, but beyond that. So I feel like that's the king. So um, I'm the lead um, in the kitchen. So I tell them I'll be back and I will go and find one of his ambassadors and find out um, our instruction for the day. So I'm going to leave the kitchen. But out the door I'm going through leads out, I guess our kitchen is next to a big room of worship. It almost looks like a Catholic church with stained glass windows and is very ornate. So I run through there and I head up large beautiful marble stairs to find the representative. And there I find one of his ambassadors and there's a lot of fuss and ruckus happening within the palace upstairs as well in the main areas and um the ambassador said the king will be staying behind with his family but the soldiers will be gone for two to three weeks so i asked where are they going and they said he said they're going to surround the the assign community but and i asked why and it's wonderful. I've been at the palace for so long, so I can openly ask the ambassador because otherwise it would be completely inappropriate for me to be asking these questions. 
So I asked him and he said that there's um, someone coming to stay there and they just want to keep an eye out because this person is extremely important and they're going to make sure that that person stays there. So I said, who is it? But I already knew because I have meetings. So I already had word from the community that Yeshua was coming to stay in the community, to come in and bring information into us. So, so I already knew the answer, but that is what he said. So he does not want him coming into city limits at all because he always brings too many new ideas for the people and they, it doesn't help them to know this information. They should just go about working and paying taxes as it is. So I let him know to just keep me informed to his when they'll be returning so we can act accordingly. So I go back down to the kitchen and I let the ladies know the information that I found. And my sister's laughing because we already knew this information. But I didn't think they'd send soldiers. But I don't think the soldiers will do any harm. They're just going to surround the area to observe. So I feel relief at that, that knowing. So my sister asks when he's supposed to come to us. And I told her in two days. So likely he'll just travel by night as he normally does, disguised, so as not to be seen. And so we start to, um, the two ladies that are in the kitchen as well, seeing we have no supper to prepare, we are going to go out and inform our group that we'll meet in two days. So we change our clothes and go into our living area and we head out on the street to do that. So we all go in different directions. And I usually go to inform the older members, and two of which are herbalists in the community, but they don't advertise it. It's just known kind of you keep it discreet. And one of them used to work with my mother, who was herbalist as well. The one woman I'm going to see is the woman that I that I gave my baby to many years ago. And he's gone now. So we're a little bit older. So she comes. She welcomes me in her home. And what I, what I apparently know, but I never, I did not know prior is, well, I know she has mystic abilities and telepathy in that. Just seeing when I handed the baby over, I didn't know her very well, but she trained within the community with me as well. So, I've since learned that, and we've become close friends. So she is, um, asked me if she might be able to start assisting me in leading the meetings and that, and I graciously tell her, yes, thank you, that'd be wonderful. So she's excited to be meeting in the two days. So I sit and just make regular chit chat with her about what's going on. Um, what she's doing and she has another child that she's working with and um, and then I tell her I'll see her so I have told all of the ladies that I need to tell all the women and I go back I go back to the palace to commence with my daily chores and duties 
And then in a short time, the other women return as well, so that, and they confirm that everyone is able to come to this meeting. So we're very excited about it. Very good. Are you still able to hear me? Yes. Very good. Well, let's learn more about this. Let's move forward to the next part of the scene that's important to see. And tell me what's happening. All of the women, and it's a huge group, much bigger, much bigger than when we first started. I bet there's maybe 40 women just crammed in our kitchen area. And we're awaiting Jesus to come and talk to us and let us know the new information that he received from the East. And we're just talking, everyone's talking amongst themselves. And it has turned into, our focus mainly is the exploration of the energy work. There's a handful of the women, the ones that usually I go talk to, that are masters in different aspects. Like the one woman that always has the raven feathers, that her expertise and the mysticisms is the telepathy. And we're trying to teach everybody how to get back to those original abilities. So we're excited to see what Jesus will have to say about any new modalities that we may be able to incorporate or add about maybe that I could learn. So, oh, so finally, oh, so finally he's arrived. So we allow him to come in and have some water and rest a moment from his travels. So I go over to talk to him and we embrace and express, oh, wait a minute. In in the, oh, entering in with him um, is Mary. And she has never come to one of our meetings before. Mm-hmm. So, describe her to me. What does she look like? How's it to be around her? She has this radiant energy. She has kind of a, like an, like an olivish skin long dark hair and she's slender. You can tell she just radiates this indescribable mystic energy, just really, oh, it's just very indescribable. And so she comes in and smiles. She's wearing kind of a hooded cloak she um, slides down her hood and all the ladies are in awe because we did, didn't know that he, like she was going to come as well. So she has a, like these large gold hoop earrings and she looks, there's an Egyptian look to her as she has, um, On her face, she has like um, lining around her eyes and some green mineral on her eyelids, but not heavily, just really lightly. She just looks so regal and beautiful, yet very humble and just like one of us. So, um, so Jesus starts laughing 
because I'm so surprised she's there. And he's like, yes, he's like, I wanted her to wait a moment before she came in. So I knew you'd be excited to meet. So I go over and I embrace her. And you can just feel this radiant energy just pulse through you when you touch her. So she wants to, um, wanted to come tonight to talk, but she also wanted to, the palace has a huge staff. So she wanted to slide in as one of the staff so that she could work with us the next three or four days so that we could learn the energy work that her and Jesus use um, to assist people in healing, but also to shift their perspectives so that they understand that they're not um, needing to be held down by the rules of the of the palace and the city that they can transcend the mundane and they can rise above that um, and it doesn't have to be in a violent or way of an upheaval just in their regular everyday life so we are just elated so jesus starts to talk about how he went back east and worked with the monks, but there are also people visiting from the far east, visiting the monks that he worked with as well. So it was kind of a culmination of training and new energy. So, a lot of the women know a little bit about energy work. So he just goes over um, like breathing and a meditation practice to, to connect to the energy as usual and things that we already know to do um, with the hands and that. But he said that he was He had a new energetic overlay that allowed him to increase his frequency and vibration. So he wanted to pass that to each of us so that our energy work would be enhanced. And he was going to show us how to do that energetic overlay. So he uses me it as his uh, model for this and he starts with he puts one hand on my chin and one hand on the crown of my head but towards the back a little bit more so and he starts there and then he covers both ears and then he has one hand on the back of my head, like at my occipital ridge, and then one on my third eye. And then he places his left hand over my heart in front, the feminine, he said, and then the back side of you being the will, his right hand, the male aspect. So he places one hand, his left hand on my heart, his right hand, on the back of my heart chakra on my back. And here in is where he does the overlay. So he's just breathing and you can feel the energy run through him right into my body. And so I feel this almost like a, like nowadays what it would look like, like a digital outline of a person overlaying on me. This, radiant gold but yet there's that intertwine of like a blue like a light like teal beautiful radiant blue with it as well so i feel such a huge difference after this and just with those hand motions the opening up of the pineal gland to help bring this energy into the heart is the purpose of touching the head so that I can work with the, all of the glands 
to help inform the aura and all the energetic layers um, about guiding them, guiding, uh, letting the energy guide the person. Just take a deep breath into this. Allow yourself to sink in even deeper to it. Allow yourself to relax even deeper into it. Deep, full breaths as you drop into it deeper. And tell me what's happening now. This energy is just radiating through me so much. I can barely speak to the group or to anyone. It's, it's as if my skin is shaking. It's um, vibrating. And I can feel my bones become warm. And I can feel it in my heart. Just this radiant opening. And I can physically feel it. And I can feel the energy rise up my spine all the way to the crown of my head. And it infuses each chakra as it goes up with this radiant new energy. It's really almost an, it's almost overwhelming, but yet it feels so good. And then he's, he's laughing and putting his hand on my shoulder and asking if I'm okay. <laughs> so I tell him I just need a minute. So one of um, the ladies gets me some water and he said it's a very moving practice and shift. So after engaging with someone, you should probably let them rest for a little while to stimulate the energy. Um, for the sake of the meeting, I attempt to reground myself so that I can part participate and be involved. So he tells us that Mary's going to stay with us for a few days so she can work with people um, individually. And then as we learn how to do that, this, we can spread it amongst our group and practice and do this to each other. And and infuse each person with this with this new overlay of energy which will raise the vibration within the city so much because there's so many ladies here and then we're encouraged to work with others there are many people that the ladies work with but we can't have everybody come to the meeting because we have a limited space. But my skin is still buzzing. My bones feel so warm. They feel almost hot. I feel like I'm levitating. That's so nice. Feel this new vibration coming into your body. Let's take a nice deep breath into that energy. As you exhale, deepen your feeling of relaxation. And move forward to the next scene that has information for you. Be there now. Tell me what you see. I've gone back to the community of the assigns with Jesus and me. And we've worked with everybody and they're, they're gonna do these overlays. And he brought me back because he said, um, he and Mary wanted to talk to me at length. And they wanted to ask 
experience, I would travel with them. I would travel with them south toward Egypt. And I asked what the purpose of his trip was. And he said he wanted to work with the energy of the pyramids and gain insight from a contact that he had there. And he thought the ladies, well, he assured me that the ladies have their meetings in that handle, but it's time for me to do some other things now. And to travel around to teach. So I tell him I will return back the next day with my answer. I'll be there for a few more days, so there's no rush. I enjoy looking into the different rooms of the community and seeing the younger people get trained on things that I know. And then I ask, Josiah, who coordinates the children with the masters, when it's, um, I wonder where he went. Um, what does Josiah do? He organizes a kind of um, matches the children with the masters. There's so many masters there that know different things that they're experts in. They're an expert in and, um, different modalities. And so he can intuitively tell what strength each child has or young person, and then he matches them with the master. And Josiah is Jacqueline from. So I wondered what happened to him after he left the, left the, the woman with the raven feathers in his hand. So he's managing that. So I talk with him at length, because that's my son, and ask him how he's doing, and it's wonderful to see him. And he invites me, instead of going back, if I would just write a letter to my sister to make arrangements and that I can stay in his quarters so that we can refresh our connection. So I tell him, yes, that would be wonderful. So I compose a letter to my sister and they send a courier. The courier has to travel at night because the Roman soldiers are still out there. They're just, they're hanging out amongst the rocks now. They're not stirring anything up or doing anything. So I ask them what new, different masters, what are the, are there new masters teaching new things since the last I've been there? It is, it has been quite a while. And he was delighted to show me. So we peek in the different rooms. And in the first room, he, he told me well before we were at the doorway to be extremely quiet on approaching. One master was working with this young child and he was levitating an orb above the table by scrying into it. And it was fascinating. So the master was showing him what his lesson was for today was how to move the orb, to move it to the left and to the right, and to try to control its movement with his mind. So I, want, I watched that for quite a while. That's wonderful. And then in the next room, he said, this is new and very... Slightly controversial within the community. And the master was working with the child to move air. And well, they're not in a room, they're in a courtyard. We left the levitating child in their quiet area. And in the courtyard, this master was working with this child to 
control the weather. So if there needed to be a cloud come by for shade or something of that nature is what they were working on today. And it wasn't seen upon as evil. It was just very, obviously, because they're teaching it. There were just some questions attached to that teaching. But there was only one child that was able to work with it. So it would never be in a negative way, of course. But, of course, in the conversation, people, you know, debate and ask questions. So, it's getting to be supper time. So he said he'll show me more in the morning. So we go to eat with everyone. And we just catch up. And I stay. And in the morning, my sister was waiting for the courier. So she sent a letter right back, encouraging me to go travel. That she would manage everything. And she always asked, she why I would even worry about it. But I am so close to her. It is almost like we are one sometimes, so it is hard to be separated. So after we break our fast in the morning, I'm drinking a water and just having a small amount of beans and vegetables. I talk to Mary and Jesus and let them know I'll be embarking with them on their trip. And so I enjoy some time to relax with Josiah before I need to get ready to go. So this, they have extra clothing and all sorts of things there. So I do not need to go back to the palace to gather my things. And since I've come along in life, I used to carry talismans with me and I just see no need for that anymore. I just like to do the work directly. So I accept the clothing that they have in the community and enjoy an evening with Josiah and we're to head out in the morning. And there's some talk about if the soldiers are going to disrupt anything. So we decide last minute to go ahead and leave in the, at night. And it'll be much cooler than anywhere. So I hug my son. And then we head out. Onto this journey. I'm good. Take a nice deep breath in and tell me what happens next. The journey is so long. I know we'll get there, but it just seems that it's taking so long. But what breaks up the monotony is we're able to stop and visit certain people in different cities. So that's been wonderful. I'm going to spend more time with in talking with Mary at length. And we know all of the same energy work and healing techniques already. But she radiates this different pure vibration. And it's so wonderful to be in her presence. And she has such a pleasant just disposition that everywhere she goes people can feel her radiate and she brings joy to everyone without even having to do anything and I asked her how her children are and she said they're doing very well and they're going to be coming to the SI community within the year to begin their training but right now they're having to be discreetly held. How many children does she have? Three. Two boys that are older, not old, like maybe right at this time, 
12 and 13 and a daughter who's nine. The daughter will continue the energetic lineage. Some of the boys, but they'll end up becoming masters in the SIP. And the girl will travel and teach. So I'm very excited her children will be coming. And she is too because she does miss them terribly. She knows she'll see them with me. So after this long journey I'm discreetly stopping in towns. It tickles me. I love the travel and the adventure. How many, but it is amazing how many people they know that we arrive in different towns along the way and we can immediately make our connection and have places to stay and have an enjoyable evening or daytime until we travel again. But we generally travel so that we can be most discreet. Arrive upon Egypt and a big market to travel at night, so it's morning. So there's this huge market. We go in and we peruse to get something to eat, and then we're to find our friend there. The market is so beautiful, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. The fabrics there are amazing. The food comes from all over. It's so exotic and beautiful. I want to stay here. I want to just stay in this city. So we go and find our friend who happens to work and, how do you say, not curate, what would be the word? Oversees what happens inside of the pyramid. Any kind of um, specific rituals that take place, whether it's Doesn't even seem like it's a word, but in two, no, not embalming, in two new people, and but then also ritualistic practices that are more spiritual. So we meet him, and we are at his home where he resides, and so we, um, he gives us all beds and we rest for the day because we were. It's been such a long journey. So he said he will feed us and let us rest for a few days before we explore the pyramids. Does he so, share his name with you? Yes, it starts with an A to start it. So A-R-U-L. A-R-U-L. Yes, A-R-U-L. A-R-U-L. And he's such a kind man. He's our age of Jesus, Mary, and I. We're in our, it seems that we're in our early 30s. So I feel like I'm 36, but I don't think so. I think I'm younger than me. Um, he is so kind and he takes us back to the market to show us all of the new exotic things that have come in and it's amazing and he says tomorrow we're going to go into the pyramids and he's going to show us what he has been receiving so the next morning before dawn even we discreetly go to the pyramid with him and we go down in and it, if 
thought you would just walk in the pyramid, but you don't. You go down these steps, down, 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 down. And there's all these different corridors. So we go into a special chamber that has a beautiful marble altar on it, in it, like in the middle of the room. And so he said it's a a table for you to lay on, like a, an altar that you're to lay on so you can receive the energy. So he asks if Jesus wants to go first, and he says yes. So he gets up on the slab, and a rule holds his ankles, and he just stands there holding his ankles. And he said, all of the work will be done automatically because where we're at in the pyramid is directly under the center. And so he just said to relax and wait. And the energy is going to beam down through the top into him, into his heart, and radiate through his body. So after a moment of breathing, you can see this bluish light coming down from the center you can't physically see it but you can sense it there but then you can see it physically go into his body and it creates this ruby red energy that permeates him at first he's uncomfortable with it he kind of curls up slightly on his side because it's so strong but I will ground him through his energy and says to just lay back and relax. And he said this energy is going to allow him to upgrade the energies of others. And they will be able to do so as well. So the light, all of a sudden in the flash, there's like a camera flash and the light goes on. And a rule has to take Jesus off the table. He looks like exhausted. So in the early morning before light when we're doing this, a rule said there's a specific astrological configuration where the energy is the strongest. So it may take a few days for us to recover. So Jesus is literally just lying on the ground, limp. But he's smiling and he said, he's nodding his head. So he's okay. I think the energy is just so concentrated and strong. He's just having no simulator. And our rule says he'll be right with him that he needs to get someone else on quickly. So Mary goes ahead and goes. And the same thing with her. He holds onto her ankles and his beam of light comes down in. And she starts to shake. She doesn't keel over with energy. Her whole body's shaking and convulsing. And so it seems to know what everybody needs. So her session is shorter, but it seems it's just as powerful. So a rule lifts her off the table and places her next to Jesus, who's starting to come back and then it's my turn so after seeing this i'm a bit nervous so he holds on to my ankles and i feel like I, my body starts to spin like my head's in one place but my body rotating like my head is the focal point and my body's starting to dial around in a circle like the hands on a clock and i can sense this in my essence body it's, it's like starting to be a tornado and and then the light hits directly into my heart space and it hurts like through my whole body it's painful because it's so strong so all the way down to my bones flushes everything out of my body and creates this your radiance. 
and it's and my body starts to shake not convulsing like mary's but just like a vibrational hum like just a fine small shaking and then it goes away just as fast as it came and so i understand how others felt because you can't move you can't barely even speak so our room takes me off the table puts me down next to the snow i've almost come back all the way I'm just gonna lay here and absorb this. And I would stop shaking on the table, but I'm still shaking. So a few minutes go by and start to come back and feel more grounded. And I will say that this energy for him opened up the chakras in his hands so brilliantly that he said everything he touches and everyone he touches can feel it and that his energy engagements are so much more powerful now so we thank him for that and then he invites us back to the place he resides so that we can rest the next few days. And I stopped physically shaking. Let's take a moment and take a deep breath in. Relax for a moment and check the sound and pause that scene. Go ahead and speak again. We'll see if the sound is better. No, the sound is not good. Let's go ahead and check the phone. Maybe move it for a moment. You'll be able to open your eyes easily. It just sounds like you're far away. Is that a little better? It sounds really funny. Mm -hmm. That might be better. That feels good for you. Yeah, that feels good. Okay. Do I just re-click on the same link? Yeah, that'll work. Our bodies hurt and our energy bodies are aching, but we feel good just the same. And it's a rule said for him it was three days, but for us it's four or five days to stimulate the energy. But we're just laying around, just eating minimal, but drinking a lot of tea and water. And the water is infused with, a rule goes to the market and gets different flowers to infuse the water with to create a very high vibration or to make help help infuse us with that. So finally in the fifth day we finally are able to leave a rules place and just go to the market so that we can get out and get some fresh air. And we feel radiant but in such a way when you're coming upon someone, I already have telepathic and visionary abilities and skills. 
but you can almost, you can look at one person and know their entire life and know why they're there and what they need assistance with and all about them just by looking at them and connecting to their energy. And it's very interesting. Um, and it's almost a little overwhelming to be at the market. But Mary asked, what are you experiencing? And I told her, and she is experiencing the same thing. She said it's almost like instantly you know the person's entire life in, in just one split second and what they need most at that moment. So, oh, I thought we all went to the market, but Jesus stayed back with our role to just speak with him. So Mary and I are practicing, so to speak. So we'll pick the same person and then we'll report to each other what we saw about their life and what they need right now. And we're exactly experiencing the same thing with each person. So this new ability is fascinating. I said it will be so helpful in healing others and maybe getting to the root of the problems that they thought they had. But really there's another issue behind it so that we can just be the most efficient healers we can be. And then also it feels like everything is very bright almost like you're looking at life through this white tunnel of light. Um, like we're able to look upon the earth in a otherworldly sense. Mm, I don't know how to describe it properly. Almost like almost like we're watching ourselves in our human bodies from afar. Like we're afar, we're watching ourselves, and we're knowledgeably speaking and interacting, but yet we're sitting in the heavens or watching, watching it play out like we're watching TV. But we're aware of what we're feeling and what we're experiencing. There's this connection to the source and heavenly and divine energy that's really phenomenal because we can toggle our view from that aspect or come into our human body. Makes sense to me. What happens next? We're gonna head back. And it, we're gonna stay for just a little bit. And our rule said that all of what we're experiencing is what he experienced as well. So he asked, what we thought about bringing people there. Good. He said, um, it's just such a far journey for people to travel there, but we would definitely spread the word about it and maybe people that are close could travel easily. And Jesus said he knows that the monks would be interested in coming and their journey would take them a very long time, but Maybe they could stop in the community and stay for a month or so and rest and then go on. But he was excited to show them. And it was, and he asked a rule, is there a way to take the energy with you or experience that elsewhere? And he said, no, only in the pyramid you have to physically come. And Mary said, what if you replicate a pyramid? And our rule said, you may receive the energy, but it will not be in such a heavily concentrated way. And we thanked him so much for showing the information to us. And we slept with him and got ready to depart. We are just going to head back to the community. Beautiful. 
think this is a good stopping place for the story today. Is there anything else left to share? We'll talk more about it next time, but when we get back to the community, their children will be there. So maybe, uh, is that something that they would like to share for today or something in the future? In the future, they'd like to share information about that. Very good. 